Hey you guys, how's it going? It's Peter Joy here, and today marks the end of the several month long span of me only posting Prehistoric Animal of the Month videos. Anyways, February's Prehistoric Animal of the Month is Dimetrodon, suggested by Kyle's Dinos. He makes short drawing videos on their channel of prehistoric animals. Now without further ado, let's get started. First off, Dimetrodon is not a dinosaur. If you thought it was a dinosaur before this video, I'm going to need you to contact the men in black before you continue because you need a blast from the neuralizer. Right here. Anyways, Dimetrodon is a non-mammal synapsid that once lived in the southwestern United States, Nova Scotia, Canada, and all across Europe. It was first studied by Edward Drinker Cope, a famous paleontologist of the late 1800s. The first use of the name Dimetrodon came in 1878 in the Scientific Journal Proceedings of the American Philosophical Society. Man, that's a mouthful. The true description of Dimetrodon came a year earlier in 1877, when Cope named it Clepsidrops, based on fossils from Texas. Many years later, it's now known that Cope's 1877 paper was the first record of Dimetrodon. The name itself roughly translates to two measures of teeth in Latin, referring to the two different kinds of teeth in its jaws, sharp canines in the front for digging into prey, and shearing teeth in the back to grind up muscle and bone. However, one of the most recognizable features of Dimetrodon is its giant sail composed of elongated neural spines. This sail would have most likely have been connected by a membrane containing many blood vessels. This possibly could have acted like a personal solar panel, soaking up heat from the sun to warm its most likely cold-blooded body and dissipating excess heat at night. Another theory proposes the exact opposite, that the sail would be used for camouflage, although walking around with a huge billboard on your back seems like it'd do more harm than good. Recent studies help shed light on how this animal might have walked. It's now thought to have had a similar walking and running cycle as modern day caimans. This would mean it could run fairly fast compared to the animals it hunted, clocking Dimetrodon at about 15 to 20 miles per hour in a short ambush. There's also evidence that suggests male Dimetrodons were larger than the females. Some specimens of Dimetrodon have been thought to be males because they have thicker bones, larger sails, and longer skulls than the others. Overall, there have been over 15 different species of Dimetrodon classified. The most recent of these is Dimetrodon teutonis, described from the Thuringian forests of Germany, which extended the geographic range of Dimetrodon outside of North America for the first time. Now, to this day, there's still a lot we don't know about Dimetrodon. No skin impressions have been found, so for all we know, it could have had filaments like feathers or fur. Most artists tend to reconstruct them with scales, though, just to be on the safe side. Dimetrodon is also thought to have lived in large wetland areas, similar to the rainforest swamps we see today. They shared their environment with many other unique animals, like the boomerang-headed Diplocalus, a Phycodon with its unusually long head, and a Daphosaurus, which looked very similar to Dimetrodon, but had teeth designed for eating plant life instead. Dimetrodon is most popularly seen in the documentary called Walking with Monsters, but can also be seen in the 1959 film Journey to the Center of the Earth. Alright, that's it for February's Prehistoric End of the Month. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, if you did, like and subscribe to see more content like this. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next video, it's, uh, it's gonna be pretty damn cool. And as always, keep your pencils sharp.